Welcome back to the show. Can't wait to get into our Mindset and Motivation Monday topic of the week, where we are going to be taking you through an ancient Japanese saying about the three different masks or faces we wear when around different people. This is something that I've looked into a few years back, but didn't really dive deep into the meaning behind it until the last couple of months. And it's a topic that I wanted to share to you, share with you, and I believe it's extremely important and the reason is this. It is, we are preventing ourselves from living our best life and we are holding back our progress for many different reasons in life. And most of it has to do with how we want people to perceive us, how we want to look out there in the world. And by holding your back your best self, you are leading to a life that you are not truly fulfilled that you are not as happy as you could be and should be because you believe someone else's perspective or viewpoint of you is going to harm you in some way. And maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But by the end of this show, I hope that you'll begin to understand how you can overcome this and why you need to if you truly want to be fully happy. All right, let's get into this first mask, this first personality of this old Japanese proverb or saying. And the first one is this. We all wear one particular mask when we're out in public. This is the one that we show the majority of the time. It's when we're with other parents from uh, our kids' school or when you're in school or you're at work or when you're out in the community. So think about this. You may act in a different way than you, uh, than you are, like let's say, with your spouse or partner or your family, Right? You act a different way when you're in public. And that is a persona. That is a personality that you are essentially taking on. It's not truly you. It's a part of you, but it's not truly you. It is what you want to display to the world. That is the mask that you wear. Now, there's nothing wrong with that per se. We'll get into that in a moment. There's nothing wrong with that per se unless you are acting in a way that is not true to you. Let me give you an example. When I'm putting on a seminar... When I'm teaching in public, even when I'm doing a podcast, I'm doing it with more energy than I might when I'm sitting by myself and I'm doing some research and reading or whatever it might be. Now, is that a part of me? Yes. My passion for teaching comes out. My enthusiasm for wanting people to learn and then implement and then get the results, right? The be, the become, the do, the action, and the actual being, the enjoying, right? So the be, the do, and the get. The get is that enjoyment, the actual uh, fruition of an action taken. So that is a part of me, but that's not who I am all the time. It's what I want to represent for my mission, for the work that I do. Now, there are also that can be a lot of negatives. What if I'm around a certain group of people or, or whatever it might be, and I want them to like me for whatever reason? And again, I think we've all gone through this. You might act in discord a little bit different than who you naturally are. And I'm not asking you to do anything differently today. I just want you to recognize the principle, and we'll tie this together at the end. I want you to recognize that you may act differently when you're at work or you're around other people, write down, just journal. Again, this is so important. If you're in the car, obviously you can wait for a moment. But journal how you act different from who you are or who you want to be when you're in public. Write that down. Really, really important. The next personality persona mask that we wear when in public, or I should say in a different facet of life, is how we act and the mask we wear when we're around close family and friends. So typically when we're around close family and friends, we're a little bit more at ease. We can kind of be more of our true self. And this then gives us a different glimpse as to who we typically are when we are taking off one of those masks, when we're a little bit more relaxed, when we're not worried about judgment in the same way. Although I will say, having worked with you know tens of thousands of people personally, that I know that family can be a real source of stress. And I know that many parents and siblings and friends, they, you feel like they're judging you, right? Because that judgment comes from within. Now, they may actually be judging you, but you don't need to feel that judgment. And we've talked about that on a previous show. The judgment comes from outside of you. But when you internalize it, you make it so. 
you make it be. So I don't want to discount that when you're around certain family members, maybe your parents, you do feel like they're judging your actions as a parent, as a student, as a uh, partner, like whatever it might be. So do, do understand that can happen. But oftentimes, like just think about like, how do you act when you're at a, a barbecue with friends? How do you act when you're just with your close friends hanging around, um, you know, enjoying a dinner together, right? That's, that might be closer to the real you. And I want you to write that down. How do you act when you're in public? Are you more reserved? Uh, do you make yourself more outgoing? Like, what is it? Because a lot of people might be more introverted. And then when they're in the public, they act more extroverted, right? I think I'm probably more towards that. I think that I enjoy more of my quiet time than I would enjoy always being out in public. I, I think that I, I truly enjoy probably having a little bit more of my quiet time. Now, I will say that I wouldn't be me though without also going out and teaching and talking with people and meeting people. I love that part as well. I love having a team. I love talking to my team. But I would say that 80% of the day, more of the day, I would enjoy more quiet time, right? More time of recharging, more time of learning and quiet time. So just want to share that with you is that it doesn't have to be bad, but certainly that part of my day is different. So think about it. How do you act in public? How do you act with closer family and friends? And the third mask, the third persona that we all have in personality is what the mask that we wear when we're alone, when we're just by ourselves, when there's no one else around. And the Japanese proverb actually says that this is the truest reflection of who we are. So if you want to know who you truly are, you'll know that by the thoughts, the actions, the feelings you do when you're alone. When you have your own quiet time and you're in your own head and you're allowed to think, you don't have any distractions from friends and family, you don't have any distractions from being out in public. So who are you when you're all alone? Think about that. Are you someone when you're all alone, you can't wait to get out there and uh, hang out with some friends and family? Like, do you like to do that? Are you more extroverted in that way? And a lot of people are, but a lot of people don't want to be alone because they're afraid of their own thoughts. And that's a different story. That's not being extroverted. That's worried about having to actually do a lot of that challenging work to think about why you might not be where you truly want to be, why you're truly not happy. What is it that would make you happy and fulfilled? and being able to live a life of passion. So what I would say is this, you're going to write down how you act in public, how you act with family and friends, like the, just the nuances, the subtle differences, and then how you act by yourself. And for me, again, like as I go through it, I would say, well, I'm, I'm the most energetic when I'm out in public, like I'm greeting people with energy. I'm greeting people with that higher self, that higher level of energy. Well, no, I wouldn't say higher self, but higher level of energy. Family and friends, um, you know, I'm still, I'm still intense. I'm still energetic. I'm still the same person. Like one of the things that people say, if I've worked with them, uh, you know, over Skype or our coaching app, or I talk with people in public, whatever it is, it's that I talk the same way. I act the same way. I, I am that, that person, right? So I'm not being different, but the, the level of intensity, the level of, uh, you know, energy might come down a little bit with family and friends. And when I'm by myself, the actually energy doesn't go away. I'm still that same person, but I'm more reserved. I really am. I enjoy my reading. I enjoy my quiet time. I enjoy reflection. I enjoy thinking. I'm a daydreamer for sure. I really am. I envision what I'm looking to do and help people five years from now, 10 years from now. I envision what I need to learn in order to get there. I envision what I want to do with Equal Life, what I want to do with Integrative Health Practitioner Institute. I envision what I want for my own self, health-wise, body-wise, relationship-wise. I mean, I'm a dreamer in that way. I really am. Uh, my head's definitely in the clouds, uh, and I'm not that always analytical person. And that's why I also have great people on my team that I know will help balance that part out of the actual, okay, making this happen and the spreadsheets and the nuts and bolts and all those different types of things. But what I wanted to share with you is this, is that we all have that part of us. But what I would say is this, is, is again, you have to look at what are your desires? What are your feelings? What are your thoughts when you're by yourself? And I have a lot of those. And, and that's, again, like what I try to get out there to people. But what I would say is this. And this is really important because the reason why the Japanese proverb said, this is the truest reflection of who we are, is sometimes we disguise who we are in public. 
And that's what I want you to be careful of. Do you disguise who you truly are in public? Do you disguise who you are around family and friends, even close family and friends? Because when you do, you're going to actually have a higher level of stress because you're not acting from who you naturally are. And when you do that, your body knows there is a discord. It, there's this, dis, uh, I always go back to it, but there's this basically cognitive dissonance of who you're trying to act like and who you actually are. And it takes so much more energy. So for me, although I'm giving out a lot of energy, it's not difficult because I'm just bringing out that part of me, the person that's already done the research and the reading, and now is just excited to teach that, just excited to share that. So what I want to, for you is to say, if you are someone that loves doing X, Y, and Z, these three things, and you don't share that in public, you don't share that part of you, and you don't do that with family and friends, you're not going to live the happiest life you can because you're hiding a part of you that means so much to you, that you don't feel confident in your self-image in order to be able to present that part with the world. So what I want to do is I actually want to take a step back right now and ask you why, because there's always a reason why. Are there some type of childhood-based programming that didn't allow you to share your true feelings, to share who you truly were? Because you were worried about ridicule. You were worried about being bullied. You were worried that your uh, parents would just dismiss it. Any of those things. Are you instead working on living someone else's life? living someone else's ideals and using their standards. If you go back to just last week's podcast on the Mindset, Mindset and Motivation Monday, we went through how to set your own standards, how to create your own life. Now, the only way that you're able to create your own life is to get your quiet time away because it's the only way to find out who the truest you are is. And so that's why I say, wake up a little bit earlier. That's some quiet time. Go for a drive if you need to. Go for a walk. I love going on walks. It's quiet time. It's able, you're able to use introspection. Don't put on music all the time, right? Don't put on podcasts all the time. <laughs> don't, don't like listen to all these different things. Listen to your thoughts for just a moment. What are they telling you? Are there desires that are not being met? If something keeps coming back week after week, month after month, year after year, that is a signal from inside that something needs to be taken care of. Maybe it's negative. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe it's a relationship issue. Fix those things. But it can also be positive. And your mind is saying, saying, you know, you want to move in this direction in life towards a new career path or um, looking right now, maybe now is the right time to look for that perfect person in your life, that, that partner that you want to spend your life with. Or maybe it's saying like, you need to work on your health. You need to work on your body in terms of health and body. Because if you don't, you're not going to feel comfortable getting out there and speaking your mission and being out there and meeting people or showing your best self. Like maybe you're afraid to go out there and find the perfect person for you because you want to lose 50 pounds. You want to get yourself healthy. You're uh, worried that, you know, all these things may not work in your favor. Well, that's okay. Maybe that, maybe now is then the right time to lose weight in a healthy way, to get healthy for yourself though, not for anyone else, but for yourself so that you feel empowered, that you feel confident, and that you also know that you did something healthy for your body so that you're most likely going to be a long, around a lot longer in order to enjoy this life that you've created. But really what it's about is it's about stepping back, journaling, understanding, beginning to develop who you are, and then being able to put together a plan that's a going to then allow you to live that life. First, it'll just be by yourself. It will be when you're alone. You're formulating, you're designing, and then you're going to share that with some trusted friends. Not with people that you don't trust, but you're going to start to share this side of you just a little bit more. Get them used to it, right? Because they know the old you. Well, we need to interject a little bit of the new you, okay? Because I don't want you to hold back. I want you to play all out in life. And so I want you to introduce just a little bit of this new you. Tell the different projects you're working on. Let them know about the health protocols or the body transformation or the relationship or whatever it might be. Let them in on that side, just a little bit with people that you trust. Okay, so now we've worked through that next layer, right? That other mask we used to wear around close family and friends. So now we're not wearing a mask there anymore. We're our unique us, right? We're, we're who we are. 
and we're with that now with more people. And then finally, finally, when you have the confidence, when you're in the position that you want to be in life, you can't help but begin to peel off that last mask of how you might act differently when you're in public, of how you might not share your best self when you're in public, that you might not live your mission because you're worried about what other people might say. When you get to that level, well, then you've unified your life. You've unified who you are in public. You've unified who you are with family friends and also who you are when you're alone because that is the true you anyway. Now, may there be some nuances, as I just said, and maybe my own life as well. Absolutely, hands down. And I still work on these things myself. I'm by no means perfect. I never want to say that. And that's, that's why I do a lot of these Mindset of Motivation Mondays so I can reinforce these same principles in my own life that I can get better and simply be better each and every week. And that's my goal. Never perfection, better each and every week. But I do know that if you're able to be unified in public with close family and friends and yourself, there's far less stress. You're much less worried about judgment. All that weight has been lifted off of your shoulders. Now you're moving through life with a new sense of freedom. And that sense of freedom is going to lead to more energy, more abundant joy, and being at peace with yourself. Thank you so much for tuning into today's Mindset and Motivation Monday. I do hope that it was helpful. And of course, if it was, please do feel free to share this message with anyone else you believe it could serve. Take care, everyone. <laughs>